Rate a surprising amount and the diversity of gamma radiation. Flying a modified U-2 spy plane over clouds scientists have detected high-energy gamma-ray bursts coming from the storms. They found that these flares are much more common it's like previously thought. Research provides new insights about mechanisms that cause atmospheric discharge. These observations in turn they can lead to more accurate estimates of the risk of lightning strikes. NASA's satellites built to detect in the 1990s high-energy particles from supernovae and other objects space noticed high-energy gamma-ray bursts coming from the Earth. Researchers in a short time determined that flashes of radiation they come from storms. Satellites not built for detection gamma radiation coming from Earth and it was difficult to study it the phenomenon. Years later, a group of scientists has been given the opportunity to fly modified U-2 spy plane over storms to make them exactly take a look. In two new articles published in the journal Nature the team described their work. Researchers found that gamma rays produced during thunderstorms, it is much more common than thought. To this scholar they spot a previously unknown type of gamma radiation from clouds the storms. Storm clouds are more than rain and lightning. They can also produce intense bursts of gamma rays, the most energetic form of electromagnetic radiation. Gamma rays are emitted in nuclear reactions and in the most extreme events in the universe, such as supernova explosions, but may also come from the nearest places. For example, from the Earth. In recent years, scientists have discovered that storms have the ability to produce gamma radiation. I've seen a lot more in thunderstorms than ever we imagined, said Steve Kummer of Duke University, CEO author of both the publication. It turns out that basically all large storms generate gamma rays in many different forms, he added. In their research, an international group of scientists that used the ER-2 High Altitude Airborne Science Aircraft. It is up to you upgraded version of the U-2 spy plane from the Cold War. He can it will rise twice as high as the aircraft of commercial lines. Scientists and scientists they equipped him with a range of scientific instruments, such as weather radars, together with multiple sensors for measuring gamma rays or microwave emissions from clouds and he flew in July last year on the Gulf of Mexico to investigate the storms the tropical one. Gamma ray bursts discovered in the 1990s it is called Earth's gamma ray bursts or atmospheric gamma ray bursts, excluding ang. ang. Terrestrial Gamma Ray Flash TGF. Their duration is counted in milliseconds and accompany some of the bloning strikes. Despite the large one's intensity and clear association with atmospheric discharges, for flight REM on the converted U-2 only a few TGFs were noticed. But the observation campaign from the relic of the Cold War, 130 of these types of phenomena allowed to observe. The ER-2 aircraft was the best observation platform for gamma rays from storm clouds, said Nikolaus Giaard University of Bergen, Norway, and principal researcher of the project. Flying at the height 20 kilometers can fly directly over the top of the cloud, so close to the source gamma radiation as possible, he added. Outside of TGF, researchers know that storms also generate significantly longer bursts of gamma rays. But during the flight ER-2 the scientists saw unknown type of gamma ray emission that consist of longer pulses the duration than the TFG and appears to be linked to longer lasting emissions. Scientists called them flickering gamma ray flashes. The FGF As the researchers admitted, FGF is legally impossible observes from space. However, from a height of about 20 kilometers, i.e. from the ceiling on which the ER-2 operated can be seen. 
The team has identified nearly 30 such flashes, each of which lasted from 50 to 200 milliseconds. The observed FGF had intermediate features between two other types of gamma radiation from storms. Scientists have known since the 1980s, storms can emit gamma rays. This happens when electric fields about huge tensions are developing inside swirling storm clouds, creating a natural particle accelerator. When electron cascades moving with large velocated with air molecules, release radiation the gamma. Given the size of a typical storm in the tropics, which it is much larger than storms at other latitudes, scientists suggest that more than half of all tropical storms produce its gamma radiation. They also assume that this gamma ray production it acts as a water vapor coming out of a pot with boiling water and reduces the amount energy that could be stored inside. Initially, it was believed that the production of gamma radiation they can match the lightning. It doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, when lightning is created, it tends to follow the emission of gamma rays, so maybe gamma rays actually initiate lightning? TGF detected from deck the aircraft almost always occurred in combination with lightning. Newly discovered emissions may be crucial for understanding how gamma rays are formed on Earth. FGF discovery can also provide important tips to better understand the dynamics of storm clouds. NASA shuts down another research instrument on Voyager 2 of the Due to the amount of NASA's energy available it decided to turn off one scientific instrument on Voyager 2. This device measured the number and direction of the ionized particles. On the probe there are four existing scientific instruments. Voyager twin probes are shipped into space space in 1977 on a five-year journey through the solar system. Their target was Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and their moons. In 1989, when the probes have completed their tour of the outer planets, embark on a mission to reach the Heliopause. Heliopause is the boundary of the heliosphere a protective bout the particles and magnetic fields produced by our Sunday. On this border solar wind destroys its speed and the pressure of the galactic winds it begins to outweigh the pressure of the solar wind. This border is located about 18 billion kilometers from the Sun. Voyager I has crossed its border the heliosphere and entered interstellar space in 2012. Six years later this was also done by the Voyager 2 spacecraft. These probes are the furthest from Earth by ships and their location gives a unique chance for to carry out the measurements. However, probes have already had their own years and their age gives for themselves, no. After 47 years spent in space, some of the instruments on the probes have succumbed to the failure some have been turned off to keep more energy and extend the mission of the probes. Despite their centuries, both probes still work and transmit data. The structures are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators. They convert heat from the decaying plutonium into electricity. However, this energy source is starting to deplete. But NASA specialists don't stop their efforts to make the probe mission it lasted as long as possible. Throughout the years of travel through space, probes have done everything to keep working scientific instruments as long as possible, because they collect unique ones the data. The team gradually shut down some onboard systems that were not necessary to keep the probes in operation, including some heaters. At the beginning last year, amendments to Voyager 2 systems were made in hopes of extension of his life. Now the plasma detector's power is shut down. This device measured the number and direction of the ionized particles passing into near the probe. Currently, the Voyager 2 spacecraft is 20.5 away. 1 billion kilometers from Earth and is moving at a speed of about 15 km/second. He 
continues to use four scientific instruments to study the region outside ours it's a heliosphere. The probe has enough power to continue to explore this A region using at least one working scientific instrument to the 1930s. NASA said in a statement that this instrument in the last years have collected limited data anyway because of its orientation towards the direction of plasma flow in interstellar space. In 2018, this detector turned out to be crucial in determining that Voyager 2 has left the heliosphere. This instrument is actually made up of a few detectors. Part is facing the Sun part directed under a right angle for the first. When Voyager 2 left the heliosphere, flow the plasma from detectors facing the sun drastically fell. The most useful data from detectors returned at right angles to those returned in the side of the sun appears only once every three months when the ship performs rotation 360 degrees around the axis facing the sun. This influenced the decision to exclude this instrument. On September 26, engineers sent a command to the probe exclusion of the plasma detector. The command sent by Deep Space Network arrived Voyager 2 after 19 hours. After 19 hours, NASA experts received the return signal. Engineers carefully monitor the changes made to 47-year-old spacecraft operations to make sure they don't generate there are no unwanted side effects. In this case, the exclusion command it was done without incident, and the probe is operating normally. On Voyager I spacecraft, this instrument crashed after passed through the Saturn spacecraft in 1980. It was shut down in 2007. 25888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888